Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. We're so glad that you're here. My name is Matt and I'm here with Cheryl and uh, we're speaking a little bit more uh, about this week's message. And Cheryl, uh, just so glad we could be together in uh, in this time right now. So just wanted to hear a little bit more from you. Mm -hmm. um, you've got a great message that you shared with us about how distracted we are. I just was curious, you know, what made you want to speak about this? Can you can you share on that a bit? Yeah, great question. You know, we were looking at how how do we where are we taking our church during the season of Lent? And how do we help people be less distracted? We just live in a distracted world. And I don't know if you do the Enneagram or I'm a seven on the Enneagram. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like wired for distraction. Yeah. I am wired to be a squirrel, you know? <laughs> I mean, that is my the story of my life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that as I try to lean into relationships with people, which I talked about in the sermon, relationships with God, if there's one thing I want to change is I want to be present. Yeah. I don't want to be looking at the phone girl, you know? Yeah. I, I, I don't want to sit down to spend time with Jesus and be, you know, <laughs> I got it, I, I got it, you know? And that's, that's me. Yeah. I hate it. So I want to grow in this. That's so, awesome. Yeah. You know, and that's great too, because the amount of access we have to so much technology oh, in this time and place, I mean, it's, it's total overload. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm an elder millennial. Um, so I live on the cusp of, you know, I can remember going to play in the woods and, <laughs> and riding bikes and all this stuff, but with the advent of the internet and yeah. all these things that have come to fruition in the last 10 to 20 years, it's unbelievable how yeah. much we can distract ourselves uh, with what's out there. And I know humanity, you could argue that it's always been that way. Sure. Um, but I, I would say it's even more pronounced because things are getting pushed to yeah. us every single day. Yeah. Um, notifications, all of these things that can just distract us. I mean, I'm telling you that I looked at my screen time the other day and uh, I picked up my phone 121 times yesterday, um, which I feel like is a lot. Um, so, I, you know, I, it, this has made me be a lot more wary Right. of uh, how distracted we could become in this season. So what would you say um, are some good practical steps? Let's say you're just, you're aware of this in your life right. um, and you know it's a thing, yep. but you're not quite sure how to correct it. Um, what would you say are some good practical steps for people right now to um, to maybe curtail some of that? Yeah, I, th I think truly the phone thing for me is big. And, you know, I mentioned in the sermon, 2,617 times we pick it up. <laughs> and the fact that your phone can tell you that is amazing to me. Um, I have literally had to get, I have to be harsh, like phone in the other room, right? If I sit down to have a, a time with Jesus, to read the scripture, to pray, um, I cannot do it on my phone. I know the hipsters, the cool kids do with their U version thing. I ha I'm doing a U, U version app right now, a plan, but I look at it to see, put the phone in the room, go to the other room and read out of a real Bible yeah. because this thing gives me notifications, gives me text messages and I can't do it. Yeah. So, and at night I've been no phone by the bed has to go in the other room, plugged in or whatever. Wow. So those are my radical. How about you? Do you have, yeah. I mean, yeah, you've that's... got kids and you guys are a giant dog that looks like a horse. I mean, <laughs> yes, what yeah. do you guys do? Thankfully, I don't have to monitor <laughs> screen time for the dog. Good. Um, although okay. he does bark at the TV once in a while if he hears another right. animal. But right. for the most part, that's okay. Um, you know, we have a an old cigar box um, mm -hmm. that is the phone box. And if we're going to have game night, um, with friends, we found that we throw all the phones in in the box um, because yeah. we'll never get through yeah. Monopoly. No, um, Monopoly is no. a long game to begin with, but we'll never <laughs> be able to finish because everybody's checking their phone every two seconds. But that I think it speaks to yeah. this issue we have. The this this symptom of a greater problem is that yeah. we love to live distracted. We love it. Um, there's a there's a, a almost like a dopamine hit that yes. comes from picking up that device and scrolling through and just living distracted. It says in the in the era of trying to be efficient and multitasking, that's that's what I've noticed. So we've got the the box. We do monitor screen time for yep. the kids as well. Yep. Um, but that's tough because it still it still prioritizes the interest around the device. Yeah. And so um you know to to implement what you're saying, it, it's it, we're essentially reformatting that. We're yeah. taking the device because it's a multifunctional device, we're taking the device out of the equation and there are other resources and things we can engage with to, um, 
to make us more interested. So I love that. So I've got some books, yeah. um, a, a physical Bible being one of yes. them, um, that I just love to open. I love the smell of the pages. Yeah. I love the weight of it. There's something tactile there. Mm. So um, just reformatting that interest at, the, at a base level has really helped. Yeah. So I think that is a good place to start and a nice practical step. Um, what would you say, you know, you've got the, the book uh, there. Um, it, it's indistractable. Indistractable. Um, I feel like I'm Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to have to start a book club. Yes. And this is the first one. I quoted this guy in my sermon. He wrote a book called Hooked, mm. and it's about marketing. And I love the fact that then he wrote another book about basically breaking all the marketers, like little triggers and things that they do to suck us in in social media, like the like button, you know, button and <laughs> all that stuff. Those are all geared to keep you addicted. Right. So then he wrote this book, Indistractable how to control your attention and choose your life. So I'm working my way through it. It has a whole, a whole section just on, for you guys, uh, how to raise indistractable children, mm. why we all need psychological nutrients. Uh, it talks about indistractable stuff, you know, being like the fact that multitasking, everybody knows that now. Yeah. Even if you're a woman, you can't do it. We're horrible <laughs> at it. It's not real. It's not a thing. Multitasking's not a thing, right. but I think it is. Mm -hmm. And so he just gives super practical tips. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, I've been working through this and I, I reckon it, recommend it. So near IL. I want to be your best friend. I recommend your book. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Um, you know, I have to be honest with you. A lot of the trends that I'm seeing more towards people trying to distract themselves less has been more, you know, get a flip phone, uh, get an RV, <laughs> go off the grid, you yes. know, and these are all, these are all like big ways to try and change what yep. we're doing. Um, and, and they, they're great uh, on a, on a, level of, wow, that's something to aspire towards. But yeah. every day we live in the tension of, you know, trying to connect ourselves uh, with each other yeah. and, and especially in COVID. And that's been really, really tough. We want to, we want to stay connected to one another, but I think what's great about what you shared is that it's important to stay connected to one another, at, but in order to really um, foster a better sense of connectedness to God, yeah. we really need to be aware of yeah. um, what is just being imported and, and essentially exported from us as well um, digitally. And so I just loved hearing that from you. So is there anything else, just closing thoughts you'd wanna share about how to live distracted free? Yeah, I think on the thing with, with God, I've, I've started a practice a number of years ago, a friend of mine suggested this, and I started with just a little timer <laughs> of one minute of silence. Mm. I live by myself and my life is noisy, right? And so to open the scripture, and then just be quiet for one minute. And then I kind of try to move it to, to two minutes and then to five and then to 10. Could I open the scripture and just be quiet with God yeah. for 10 minutes? So that, yeah. that'd be one thing that That's I'd share. Great. So Awesome. Anyway. Well, thanks so much for sharing. Yeah. And, and, and thanks so much for joining us. Yeah. Um, and join us back every single week as we unpack more practical steps uh, in this series to stay unsubscribed. And um, we just appreciate you so much.